Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the program my good friend and hardworking American, Dale Intrican is here. Dale, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Dale, I've got something for you. Okay. You didn't know that I was going to have that. I have a present for you right now. You have a present for me? Yes. Okay. Well, you're aware of the SmarterSanDiego.com poll yeah. for top mortgage loan officer of the year in San Diego. Okay. And you, my friend, made the top 10. Oh, sweet. Kaboom. There it is. Awesome. Top 10 yeah. lender in San Diego. That's, see, I, I saw I saw it lurking around in, behind the desk, <laughs> but I didn't know what it was for. That's great. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate that. So that poll was super, super hot on our website at SmarterSanDiego.com. But even hotter than that has been the recent article that we wrote about uh, Donald Trump. Yes. So we have an article that we put on SmarterSanDiego.com. It's titled, Three Reasons Why Donald Trump is Doing So Well in the Polls. Now, the reason I wanted to ask you about this okay. is because I know you're conservative. Yes. Okay. And I know you watch the debates. So Donald Trump, what do you think? Donald Trump. That's a it's an extremely hot topic, <laughs> right? Yeah. The uh, I, when I when I look at Donald Trump, I I see that he's hitting a nerve with the American people, and uh, I, I think it's a good thing. I think it's spurring a lot of interest in politics, which I think for the most part has been kind of subdued, especially you know through the last few decades, really. Mm -hmm. And uh, I look at it and I I see that he's generating some buzz, but I'm not sure I buy it. I just yeah. don't. I don't buy him. You don't buy it. No, I don't buy him. I don't think he's. A, I don't think he's a real, true conservative. For one, I think he's generating the interest. Mm -hmm. um, you know, through kind of like these buzzwords and buzz rhetoric. I guess you could say, uh, but I. I just don't. I don't know. I see a guy who's spent a lot of time donating to uh, various political groups. Yeah. You know, with the Clinton campaign. Now all of a sudden he's a conservative. Maybe he's not. Maybe he is. I don't know. I just think it's convenient. Okay. You think it's convenient. Well, yeah. he's definitely doing well in the polls, uh, yeah. as you'll find out if you go to SmarterSanDiego.com and check out this article. Uh, we cited three reasons that we thought uh, he was, you know, uh, gaining traction with, yeah. with voters out there and people who were polling. Number one is that he seems to be very honest. It seems that he's telling the truth, even when it incriminates him, you know, admitting to donating money to the Clintons, for yeah. example, and why he did it and saying all those things. Um, I think that's something that people have been wanting to see. You know, politicians always dance around. They always say, you know, I do not have sexual relations. With you know, there's always <laughs> right. some ridiculous thing that they're saying uh, to deny well, the truth. And it doesn't seem like Trump's that guy. So we think that was one reason. Yeah. Also, it's very clear he's not a politician. Right. Yeah, that's that's blatantly clear. That's blatantly clear. <laughs> I think people are sick of politicians. Yeah. Frankly, I'm sick of politicians. Absolutely. Like you said, it's been uninteresting because you know what they're going to say. They're yeah. going to tell you whatever they think you want you want to hear, and then they're going to hope to get your vote because they are they're getting your eye, but for some reason, who knows yeah. why? Uh, and then the other one was that he doesn't owe anybody anything. So these are the three reasons he doesn't owe anybody anything. He has, in other words, yeah. no contributors to his campaign, which means that he doesn't owe anybody any favors. He can say whatever he wants. He doesn't have to do anything particular. Uh, has no markers that people can call in on him. So those are the three reasons that we thought he's getting trash because he's got, in this, according to the polls, the average of all the polls, major polls, he's got more than double the support of the next person. Yeah, he's, he's definitely killing it. I think, I think we have to look at some of those polls and figure out who they're who they're polling. talking to. <laughs> who are they polling? Because there there is there's definitely a, like there's definitely a. A, a, a level of interest, a high level interest. It, I mean, we saw with the, the, the debate itself, like smashed debate records. Yes. Absolutely just obliterated it. Well, that's because everyone wants to know what he's going to say. They're right. excited about, you know, is he going to say something that's going to be crazy? Is he going to tell somebody to shut up, call him an idiot? So you think they're getting raised because of the freak show? <laughs> yeah, he's, a, he's, a, he's, like, a, he's a tra it's like a traveling circus. Now, I, I get it. I get like the, I get the interest in it because it is, it, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I like political you know, political, you know, shows. I watch them all the time. But, you know, even I was interested to know, like, I wonder what he's going to say. Mm -hmm. You know, they got him, they're going to have him front and center. Like, but I, I think that he's treating it like a reality show. He really is because ultimately, if you go on his website, he doesn't even have any, there's no campaign, like, positions. There's nothing. It's really about who he is. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I built these businesses. I did this. I did that. But it's not really... Like they're, they're, even his his campaign was like, well, we're almost ready to put those out there. Like, really? Wouldn't that be like when you started to run for president? One of the first things you wanted to do was show people what you stood for. So I, I, I like I, I think some of his positions are probably 
what he feels. I just don't know if he's truly principled in okay. all of it. And, and that's what I'm really looking for, someone who's principled. You know, I'd like the excitement. I think he's bringing good interest. But is he going to is he gonna split in the middle and take half the votes with him over to the independent if he doesn't get elected? That's one thing that... Well, I'll tell you right now. Uh, I believe right now Donald Trump is negotiating the biggest deal of his life. Yeah. He's negotiating a deal with the Republican Party. And what's happening is he is basically saying, listen, you guys need to get behind me. I'm not telling you I'm going to get behind you, but if you don't get behind me, I can torpedo you. Oh, he will totally torpedo you. And he is that type of guy. I like it because we need someone who can really negotiate. You yeah. know, we really need someone who can look out for the best interests of the country, and that's what the president's there to do. I don't think we've gotten that in the last eight years, and ultimately I think it's going to come down to this. Pretty simple. Yeah. It's going to be Hillary. She's running away with the polls on the Democratic side unless something drastic changes there. Yeah. So what we're looking at is we're looking at a debate where right now, if it were to end right now, you'd have Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. And I think it'd be very simple. I think Donald Trump would say, listen, if you want the same thing you've had the last eight years, vote for her. If you want something like the complete polar opposite, vote for me. And that's going to be the end of it. Yeah, so I, think I, think, just, I think people would really, I mean, if it was just that black and white, I think people would be, he would run away with it with her. And that's what I think it is ultimately. But yeah. we will find out. Uh, speaking of the government and money, yes. um, I noticed that Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are sending a whole bunch of Q2 profits over to Huge. the Treasury. Billions. Eight plus billion dollars mm -hmm. in profits in three months. Uh, so the government now very, very invested in the mortgage industry as a mortgage lender, as a top 10 mortgage lender, by the way, in San Diego. Um, how I, have the, I have the award to prove you've got, you've got the proof. I know it's right there. <laughs> second guess you. Do you. How do you feel about that? Knowing that the, Fannie and Freddie back 90% of the mortgages in the country, mm -hmm. Uh, they were bailed out by the government. They've now repaid that debt back to the Department of Treasury. They're now paying profits directly back to the Treasury. Do you feel it's an advantage to have the government so invested in the mortgage business? When things go bad, it can be. You know, I mean, it, without that initial investment bailing out Fannie and Freddie in 2008, the mortgage industry would have would have disappeared for, I mean, who knows how long. It, it, as much as we, we hate seeing big government intrusion into the private sector. Fannie and Freddie were never really private entities. You know, they're that quasi government back. Pseudo. Yeah, it's private company. Yeah, yeah, it's not really private. Even though they can, you know, we have you have private shareholders, it's you know, it's it's it, it it doesn't really follow the same standards. So when they when they jumped into the market and took, you know, basically they took conservatorship over Fannie and Freddie in two thousand eight, they were just hemorrhaging money. Through the next three years, yeah. they didn't turn anything over. They, and so that's why the government said, you know, we're going to change the relationship here. Instead of the 10 to 12 percent dividends, we're going to take 100 percent of the profits. <laughs> and whether or not that's really legal, yeah. you know, to it's the shareholders right now I mean, it, it is, as I guess, going to be litigated in court. But when you really look at the situation at hand, that enabled the market to stabilize for that short period of time. I don't, I don't know if there was there wasn't a lot of private money. No, I, I definitely agree it was necessary for them to survive and for the mortgage industry to continue, for people to be able to buy homes and get yeah. financing easily. What I wonder, though, is now, do they see it as just another you know, ATM machine um, that's just going to continually crank out money? In other words, are, is the government then going to become dependent upon this money coming in and then be even more crippled in the situation that it stops coming one day? Well, that's a good point because you really look at it and they've paid back and then some, and that money's still owed. Like they consider it still that they haven't paid back that principal balance, even though they've paid more than the initial investment. Right. So it's a, it's definitely a cash cow right now, and I think that's why the shareholders, the twenty percent who hold private shares, are pretty upset. Right. Because they they feel like they have they have interest in that as well, and they should collect that money, at right. least a portion of it. Something. You know, something. <laughs> because back anything. That's yeah. why I mean, Fannie and Freddie shares are. I mean, they're they're so cheap compared to what they should be with, with a company making billions and billions of dollars per yeah, quarter. Per quarter. Yeah. In profits. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. So you feel that it's it's a good thing if things go bad. Uh, but overall, I mean, you're basically in the same boat as the government, you know, being in the mortgage industry. It, the government's in the mortgage industry, plain and simple. Well, it's scary if things go bad because they are so invested in it. You know, they're 100%, you know, basically reaping these profits. At the same time, almost every mortgage loan, like you said, 90% is backed by Fannie, Freddie, or HUD. You got all these backed by these three NBA and USDA and every, you know, almost everything government backed. What happens if the market takes a fall like it did in 2008? 
Yeah. You know, then, you know, we're taking huge losses, you know, and that's why, that's why these investor groups are feeling that it's positive, that for them, the risk is less. The Fannie's insuring these 100%. Right. You know, and so, you know, but the average right now, they said the average credit score for a, a Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac borrower is 750. Wow. So these what? are, these, yeah, they haven't, they've, they've tried to work with getting lower credit scores, trying to generate like, hey, we're open for business. That's what one of their mottos has been this last year. If you're looking for credit, we're open for business. But the reality is, is with the overlays, with the risk layered, you know, from lenders that they put on the, on the loans, which basically change your interest rate, you know, 750 is where most people are going when they're conventional. Yeah. When they have lower credit scores, they're going to FHA. Yeah, very good point. From a top 10 mortgage lender here in San Diego, Dale Intrigan. Dale, thanks so much for being here, man. Really yeah. appreciate it. Appreciate you too. Dale thanks Intrigan. for the award. Yeah, you got it. Hey, congratulations, dude. That's <laughs> a big it. deal. Dale Intrigan, Synergy One Lending. Stick around for more Smarter San Diego TV, where we guarantee to make you smarter than everyone else commercial free.